everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted one of my favorite paintings, The Indian Princess. So lately, I've been really trying to emphasize on how to make things look three-dimensional and how to bring things to life. So in this video, I'm going to put a lot of focus on my brushwork and how I see my subjects. I want to welcome you all to Mandy Key Art Studio. In this channel, you will learn a whole lot about how to paint photorealistic portraits. For more in-depth, step-by-step, real-time painting videos, you can find me on Patreon and the link below. My ebook, Becoming the Self-Taught Artist and a Color Mixing Cheat Sheet is also available for download. Without further ado, let's get started. This year, I've taken a step back and went back to explore some of the techniques that I learned when I first started taking lessons. I noticed that I started to pick up some bad habits in the last few years when I was rushing a lot of my paintings and getting ready for exhibitions. So this year, I got in touch with my art teacher and I'm trying to focus more on the quality rather than the quantity of what I'm painting. One major change in how I'm painting now is that I'm using a physical reference photo so I can color match improve my colors. I find this a lot better to improve my color mixing abilities compared to looking at a monitor for reference. A screen monitor always makes a photo look more vibrant than it really is and it's hard to understand the true colors of the picture and you can't put paint on your screen so it's hard to work with. So here I'm actually holding the photo in my hand, but I'm displaying the model on, this, on the screen here so you can follow along with what I'm painting. I love the photo that I'm working with because I can see so many different shapes and planes on the model's face and that gives me more to work with. I have to keep in mind that no matter what part of the face I'm painting, everything is three-dimensional. Nothing is flat like a piece of paper and this is a real person. It's more intuitive if you imagine that you are painting a ball and the shape is obviously a circle. The planes curve in all directions. Each latitude and longitude is different in color which makes it look three-dimensional. Similar to portraits, every part of the face, essentially anything that has a round surface, gets cooler as it recedes away from the camera and that it's not just cut off like a piece of paper. This is really important in painting anything that has a curved shape. And in this painting, the colors become more cool as it's further away from the light source. So the plane change on the forehead is not only going from left to right, but it's also curving up and back. This means that whatever color you use for the forehead, it doesn't just meet the hairline all of a sudden. There's actually another cooler color there that makes it look like it's receding back before it reaches the hair. And that leads me to color strings. Knowing how the planes change on your subject will help you understand the colors that you should be looking for. Sometimes we have to know the subject first before we mix the color. Now I won't be showing the color mixing palette in this video because I want the focus to be on brush handling. And this particular technique that I'm demonstrating is applying color strings. Imagine a curved surface with light shining on it from one side. The color on the surface changes as the planes change, and each plane is a different color string. Now going back to painting a ball, now imagine a globe. We all know that it has latitudes and longitudes. If you were to paint the globe, each row of latitude is a color string, and so is every vertical line of the longitude. Each one of those color is a string, and I'm mixing and applying each string individually. So it's kind of like sculpting with oil paint. And instead of doing what I usually do, which is applying paint on the whole area and then mixing additional paint on it while it's still wet, here I'm treating each plane change as a different color. Now this works particularly well under the circumstance that the lighting and the angle of the model creates very dynamic colors. You don't want to choose a photo that's overexposed, like a flash cam. 
which flattens out a lot of colors and you lose the beautiful natural facial structures and features. You want the model's pose to be anything but straight up and front facing like a passport photo. It can even just be a slightly tilted face. So this will create a dominant side of the model's face and of the photo to have one dominant light source. You also want to be able to see everything in the photo without it being overexposed or too dark that you can't see what's going on in the shadows. That way you will be able to see the model's face like a 3D structure with different colors on each plane. The way that each area of the face fuses with each other creates edges, and these are the boundaries between two areas. This can be the area with a shadow meeting light or when an object meets another object. I want to focus on areas where the dark meets light because this is easily missed. Usually there's a warm color string in between the dark and the light. Shadows never just go from dark to light, there's always a warm and more neutral color there. It's very small and ignored by a lot of people because you could usually get away with leaving it out. But if you try to paint it, your subject will look that much more three-dimensional. And that's the difference between a face that just looks like a face and a face that's really coming alive. You can see this example where I paint the hair that's casting a shadow on the side of the cheek. There's a warm shadow before the flesh tone begins. The same thing with the crease on the cheek beside the mouth. There's a warm tone beside the crease before it transitions into a highlight color on the face. And this happens in creases and wrinkles in all sizes, no matter how small. And now I know this can be a challenging addition to what you're used to painting, but what you can start doing is just look for these colors and train your eyes to start seeing them first, and then it will be more intuitive to paint later on. Another technique that I'm demonstrating here is how I'm painting outside in, meaning I'm painting around the face and then working my way into the focal point of the painting. Sometimes I do like to start on other areas like the eyes or whatever pops out at me the most, but for this particular technique, one of the reasons for painting around the focal point is because of the emphasis on edges. The area around the edge that you're painting needs to be wet in order to blend and fuse together. You should never lay wet paint on a dried surface of a different color. So for the first part of the painting, I'm working on the hair, the hairline, and the edge of the cheek together. Another reason why I'm working outside going from big to small is because typically the closer to the center of the painting, the more fine details there are because that's where the focal point usually is. And therefore, you waste less time if you have to change or redo something along the way that has less detail than, than to render a lot of fine details for a long time and then having to change it after. Now you'll notice that I'm painting with a very small brush, essentially painting each plane and then softening the edges with a dry nylon brush. And you'll also notice that I labeled dry brushing in all the areas where I'm doing this blending technique. The most important thing about this is always keeping the nylon brush dry. And after every softening touch, wipe the brush on a paper towel to make sure there's no paint on it and keep blending and softening the paint. When it's over softened, you can come back and add more paint to make certain parts stand out more. Dry brushing is not only to blend, but you can also move the paint around to change the shapes in your painting. This technique is amazing, and it's basically my get out of jail free card that I picked up on since I started painting. Because sometimes the brush that I'm painting with is hard to get it right from the get-go. And having a dry brush will allow me to move the paint around or blend without adding more paint or making it more messy. This dry brush will allow you to carve your subjects with more precision, especially when you're painting small and detailed areas of the face, like the eyes and the mouth. In summary, these are the main techniques that I'm demonstrating throughout this painting. 
always analyze the subject that you're painting, whether it's a face, fruit, landscapes, or florals. Think about how the subject bends and how all the planes are changing and work in sections so you can really understand the structure of that area. Whenever a dark and a light color converge, look closely and apply the warm mid-tone that's in between the light and the shadow. Working outside in, apply each color string separately and then soften the whole area with a dry nylon brush. And last but not least, keep practicing because that's how you will continuously evolve and rediscover yourself as an artist. Let me know of any questions in the comments below. I hope you enjoy the rest of the painting as you watch her come to life.
Thank you.